a shape, size, position and it can be moved from one place to another and its boundaries are called surfaces. They separate one part of a space from another and are said to have no thickness. And the boundaries of the surface are either curves or of straight lines and this lines end in points. See if I consider the three steps from solids to points. In each step if you observe V loses one extension right which is also called dimension. Where if you observe solid has three dimension whereas a surface has two dimension and a line as one and the points as none. So this Euclid summarized these statements as a definition and he began his exposition by listening 23 definition in a book one of our elements. And let us see few of them. What are those? The first one is a, a point is that which has no part. The second one is a line is a breathless length. The third one is the ends of a line are points and the fourth one is a straight line is a line which lies us evenly with a point on itself and the fifth one is a surface is that which has length and breadth only and the sixth one is the edges of surface are lines and the final the seventh one is the plane surface is a surface which lies us evenly with the straight lines on itself. So in geometry we take a point, line and a plane as a undefined terms which we already consider in this statement right. So we consider it as a undefined terms because to define one thing or one terms you need to define many other things or terms I can say and you may get a long chain of definition without an end. That's why we're going to consider the point, line, plane as a undefined terms. And Euclid assumed certain properties which were not to be proved and this assumption are actually obvious a universal truth. And he divided them into two types which is called as a postulates and axioms. Let's see some of the Euclid's axioms. The first one is things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another. The second one is if equals are added to equals the alls are equal. And the third one is if equals are subtracted from equals the reminders are equal. And the fourth one is the things which coincide with one another are equal to one another. And the fifth one is the all is greater than the part. And the sixth one is things which are double of the same things are equal to one another. And the seventh one is things which are half of same thing are equal to one another. Let's see the meaning of this axioms using examples. The first common notation which states that Things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another. This could be applied to a plane figure. For example, if a area of a triangle is equal to the area of a rectangle and if a area of a rectangle is equal to the area of a square, then I can say that area of triangle is also equal to the area of square or as in simple way. I can take it as if A is equals to B and if B is equals to C then A is equals to C. That's it. Right? And the magnitudes of the same kind can be compared and added but the magnitudes of different kinds cannot be compared. For example, a line cannot be added to a rectangle nor an angle can be compared to a pentagon. And if you observe the fourth axiom, it states that things which coincide with one another are equal to one another, which is nothing but if two things are identical, then they are equal. Or in other words, 
everything equals itself so it gives the justification for the principle of superposition whereas for the axiom phi the all is greater than the part it gives the definition for the greater than for example if the quantity b is a part of another quantity a then a can be written as the sum of b and sum of third quantity c or symbolically i can write it as if a is greater than b this means there is some c such that a is equals to b plus c this is about the axioms or axiom so now let's see the euclid 5 postulates where the first postulate states that a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point and the second point states that a terminated line can be produced indefinitely postulate 3 it states that a circle can be drawn with any center and any radius and the postulate 4 it states that all right angles are equal to one another and the postulate 5 it states that if a straight line falling on two straight lines makes the interior angles on the same side of it taken together less than the two right angles then the two straight lines if produced indefinitely meet on that side on which the sum of uh, angles is less than two straight or two right angles so in the next class let's see a detail about this postulate